Hello everybody and welcome back to The Crucible. It's time for this year's CMC Creative Keynote. We've welcomed some wonderful speakers in this lot in the past, from Patrick Ness and Mallory Blackman to Jenny Seeley, and last year, Children's Laureate Chris Riddell. They've all contributed huge amounts to the lives of children and set the agenda for our CMC conversations. So how could we up our game for CMC 2017? Well, it soon became obvious. We'd invite not one, but two cultural icons. And when we realized that they were celebrating their 21st anniversary in the business, it all seemed such a good idea at the time. <laughs> Richard McCourt and Dominic Wood have dedicated their careers to entertaining kids. And with a combined experience of 40 years, they are very much experts in the study of silly. There is literally nothing they don't know about putting a pie in your face or flinging custard over an audience. But don't let that distract you. Uh, they are as serious as anyone here about serving the children's audience. In their 21st year as performers, Dick and Dom are as dedicated as ever to delivering the very best in nonsense. Just how serious they're going to be tonight, I couldn't possibly say, but I'm delighted they're here. So, to bring you up to speed, let's start with a crash course in Dick and Domics. Dick and Dom's CBBC journey started a long time ago. Dick, or should I say Richard, joined in summer 1996, presenting the bits between the shows, hugely dressed as a giant ladybird. Kirsten said it would be her today. Dom wasn't far behind, making his debut that Christmas as one of the hosts of the Friday Zone. I used to play the cornet, but... Uh... I used to get ice cream stuck up my nose. It was a live entertainment show where they did stuff like, well, squeeze jellies through colanders. Weird. The pair first teamed up when Dom joined Dick in the CBBC studio at Easter 97. Oh, hello there. Over the next couple of years, they worked together and even lived together whilst getting up to stuff like this. Yes! Oh, oh. Yeah. They also presented a part, though, on things like the Animal Magic Show, Hyperlinks... Hello! Let's get hyperlinking. ..and Tots Time. Great! This is my favourite tape. It always makes me feel like dancing. No! Oh, thanks! The boys became a full-time double act in 2001, and their first project, Bring It On, saw them given a week to learn a new skill, like being a cow vine. Oh. <laughs> Become stand-up comedians. Sometimes we even find ourselves finishing each other's sandwiches. Sentences. And become pop stars. But we can't sing! Yeah! With just a few arguments. You should have done what we did in the last rehearsal, no, 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 which was to go in a single file. I just told the guy, asked the guys, they no. said that's what they were doing, what we just did. Oh, calm down, boys. <laughs> now known as Dick and Dumb, the boys returned to present the bits between the shows and were given a big new weekend job. Wake up, Dick and Dumb again. Dick and Dumb in the bungalow was live. Okay. Oh, oh, shut up. Messy. <laughs> and rather random. You're enjoying it? It's good, isn't it, this place? It introduced us to Diddy Dick and Dumb for the first time. Yeah, hello, lovies. <laughs> and got everyone shouting... Boogies! Wood with a heart-stopping 6.7. The bungalow entertained millions and won two BAFTAs. We're great! Before closing its doors and getting well and truly stamped on in 2006. But the hits carried on coming thick and fast. There was The Legend of Dick and Dom, Dick and Dom Go Wild, Funny Business, Splatterlot, Blue Peter You Decide, Hoopla and Diddy Movies. And of course, you can still see them on CBBC all the time in their top draw shows, Diddy TV and Absolute Genius. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the Children's Media Conference. You've been getting bored out of your mind sitting through mind-numbing lectures about international financial distribution of factual programming and preschool learning. You thought you were here to watch the snooker, but instead, please welcome Dick and Dom! Clap your hands! Clap your hands! Clap your hands! Oh yes! Hello everyone, how are you? Dick, have a little dick! Still got it! But you can't do that, can you? Oh, hey? God, hang on. No, hold on, hold on, stop, stop. stop. 
stop the music. Well, I'm knackered. Can't do that anymore. I'm 40 years old. Give me Dick and Dom into hospital. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, welcome to the 2017 Children's Media Conference with us, Dick and Dom. Make some. Hey. Thank you. Make some more noise on this side. Make some noise on this side. Make some noise at the very back. Let's hear you. Are you with us? Less Good. impressive. All right, everyone in the middle for diddle. One, two, three. <laughs> nice. I'm not forgetting the mosh pit down at the front here. Yeah, let's hear you make some noise. It's very good. Okay, now what we're going to do is split this room, you guys, in half. Well, they so, already are. Oh, they already are. Yeah. All right, okay. Actually, madam, which way are you going to go? Yeah. Shut your legs and go one way or the other. Yeah. You, you can't can. have Dick and Dom. No. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> that means this side, you're my side, and I'm calling you the Dicks. Come on, you can be louder than that. Let's hear you. The dicks! Hey. <laughs> what? That means you guys over here, you're the good-looking lot. Of course, you are the doms! <laughs> Boo! They're very beautiful. See, and there's no doubt about it. My side are louder than yours. How oh, you think so, do you? Yes, I do. Well, I will prove you wrong. Prove it! Because after three, the dicks will shout out the B word. The B word. You know what the B word is, don't you? Hey. Come on, we made a whole career out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Bogies, after three, is louder than the doms. Are you ready, dicks? One, two, three! <laughs> Meaty. Nice. Meaty. Very good. Sounded like a mouse flying into a jam jar. Oh. OK, Dom's bogeys after three. One, two, three. <laughs> Come on, I see that not only are they louder than your lot, they're down sight better looking as well, <laughs> apart from her. Uh, I mean, look at the state of your lot. They look like they sit around all day on their saddlebags watching Jeremy Kyle. All right, all right. What? Look at the state of your lot. They look like they've been on Jeremy Kyle. Well, see that bloke over there? Oh, yeah. But he even looks like Jeremy. Oh, oh God, it's Jeremy Kyle. All right, Jeremy. Hi, how, you how are you? Doing? All right. Anyway, we're going to start off with a little song. Don't worry, you don't have to sing. You're just going to do some actions for us. It's got yeah. bogeys in it. Yeah. Uh, it's a song called My Bogeys Lie Over the Ocean. Yeah. Every time you hear a word in this song, beginning with the letter B, you put your hands in the air like that. Hands up in the air like that, yeah. No, easy. When you hear another word beginning with B, you put your hands down again. Simple. Very simple, that. Simple. Even the people in the media can follow yeah. this one. Even, even commissioners can do this, all right? <laughs> so let's see how you get on. Okay, so for example, if I said the word balamori, it begins with B, what would you all do? Easy. Hey, they're very good, you see? If I said basketball, what would you do? Clever. Basketball. I'll tell no. you what, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, they need to practice, don't they? Definitely okay. need to practice. Yeah. Hit the music, here we go. Everybody, Everybody together, 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 follow us right. in the directions. Like bogeys. Bogeys, bogeys like begin with B. All right, ocean. keep them up. Look at your doms, you're rubbish, you. Like down. Like the decks down. are better. The God, the six are Come better. On. Come on, Come let's on. see ya. Very good. Now don't cock it up. She's even doing it with a camera. Right, ready. One handed. So bring back, back my bogeys. No, 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 no. Stop, stop the music. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing, sir? Idiots. He's putting his hands up on two and down on me. They don't begin with B, do they? If they began with B, that'd be booby. <laughs> That's you, not in the song. You just said booby. I said booby. At a children's media Smacky conference. Smacky dotted. Idiot. And uh, there was a lady back there. Well, her hand so far in the air, it looked like she got Russell Brand in a headlock. <laughs> Give it a trim, yeah. Him nice. back there, it looked like it was going to take off. He was like that. I te tell you what, we'll do, we'll do it one at a time. So you start, I'll follow. You fart, I'll swallow. Yeah. Right. Are you ready, Dix? Here we go. Better than the dumps. It's going to be even faster this time. Hit the music. Here we go, Dix. Come on. Oh, it's fast. Oh, it's good. No, no, no. Good boy, no, no, Dix. Let's see ya. No, you're dumps. These are Dix. Yeah. Bogies, good. Oh, now listen carefully, watch me. So bring back my bogies. I'll tell you, what, you did it wrong really again, what are you I mean, doing? Really bring back, I mean, really, bring I mean, back, they're, bring they're back my bogies. Bring back, bring back, bring back, bring back, bring What are you doing? Bring back, bring back, bring back my bogies. Good work, Nix. Bring back, bring back my bogies. Yes, give yourselves a cheer. <laughs> Nice! Right, Dom says show man's done. Hit music. Ready? Here we go. Ready? We're gonna win this. Here we go. Ready? Come on, keep up, keep up, keep up. You go all the way up and you show your sweat patches. Down. Head on the back, I love you. Come on, sort it out. I love you. Sort so it much. out! Oi! Come on! Ready? You can do better than that! Bring back my bogeys. No, not keys on the up, what are you doing? Bring back. Got it all over me. Oh god, what the hell are you all doing? Well I peed myself! I threw it in my own face! What did they do? I threw it in myself! Oh, you idiot. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> 
forget it. Good work. No. At what point did you think you should deserve your own applause? <laughs> you didn't, that was awful. And actually, it's been an interesting experiment doing that game. Usually we do it at uh, holiday camps, festivals, you know, on theatre tours, whatever. But for you guys, that was great. And it really means something. It means, out of all the audiences we've ever had, you guys have got to be the most recent. So very, <laughs> very interesting. All that build-up for that. There we go. Well, anyway, it was a load of nonsense, really. We just wanted to get bogeys out of the way. So anyone else that shouts bogeys from now on will be removed. Yes. So uh, don't do it. Anyway, it is a great honour and a pleasure to be here to give the creative keynote at the 2017 Children's Media Conference. And the best thing about it all is, it's in my hometown of Sheffield. Yeah, now, Sheffield is famous for steel. And, uh, well, it's famous for steel, really. <laughs> and uh, my hometown is Exeter. No, OK. All right. uh, and we don't have any uh, steel cutlery because we still eat with our hands. So that's, that, that's great. But anyway, uh, so years and years and years and years ago, along with the dinosaurs, Rich was up here in Sheffield. I was down there in, in Exeter in Devon. And that's where we started our, our journey into the world of, of entertainment. So Rich worked down the road at the Children's Hospital yep. doing hospital radio. And I was a magician doing birthday parties and um, busking on the streets of Exeter. So yeah. That's how we started. I mean, we'd always had a massive passion for children's television. Uh, and we went from just watching it to wanting to be part of it. I guess we're about, what, 12 years old? About 12, yeah. Yeah, 12 years yep. old. Uh, we wanted to be involved, preferably as presenters in this amazing part of the media. Of course, at 12, we still hadn't met. Me, Sheffield, him, yes. Exeter. Yes. Eat with their hands. Yes, eat with their hands. That's what we do in Exeter. <laughs> Well, um, and, and we were, um, yes, uh, and we were influenced, as many kids were around the same time, by certain figures on television, like Philip Schofield on the, the room cupboard. Where is he? Aww, Still got his colour there. No, there. there. And the, and the oh. <laughs> Stop it. I was hey. talking about the gopher. All oh, right. You're not too far off yourself, old boy. Oh, I leave it. All right. And look, there's little Gordon Gopher. And other programmes influenced uh, as well, um, like the Wide Awake Club. Yep, yes. on TV AM. There you go. Uh, other programmes. Now, this one was really influential. The Big Breakfast. Anyone watch that? Yeah. Did anyone work on that? Nope. No. Oh, oh, one of the back. Did you? What did you do on it? <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> good, uh, good job we were nice about it then, eh? <laughs> Favourite show ever. Yes. Uh, uh, and of course, the other show that, that I think put us uh, uh, in the position that we're in now uh, was this one. It's Fanny Craddock Cooks for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, with an unforgettable catchphrase. This won't stretch your purse. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't get that past the senses now, would you? No. <laughs> now, these were TV shows where it, it seemed that there were no scripts and where anything, anything can happen. Yeah. Uh, we first met each other at the age of 19. Uh, quite Hang on, I was 18. Oh, boy. All right. 18, 19, All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we entered the uh, brilliant world of children's BBC presentation, and a talented team of BBC producers inspired and developed us into the act that is now Dick and Dom. Now, on the first day there, I thought there was going to be months ahead of going into a big studio yeah. in front of the camera, the lights, the lights showbiz, presenting fan live. Mail. Yeah, present yeah. fan mail, yeah. presenting live on BBC One. Now, that mm. didn't happen. What actually happened was I opened the post. Mm. Yes, I was a runner for many years, but the best part about that was this is where we learn about our audience. We learn what they like. Opening post. When we opened the post, we could see what they like, what they didn't like, what yeah. they complained about. Yeah, because we, we were getting, in the days before email and kind of faxes weren't really being used, uh, we were getting just giant sacks, Hessian sacks full of posts. We'd get about, Dorian Silver would get about six or seven yeah, yeah. posts bags a day. And inside there were complaints from parents about programs like Teletubbies. Seven bags a day of complaints about Teletubbies when it first started. Actually, the worst bit about it was your sack was bigger than mine. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> Little bit. Where are we going with this? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll always be uh, really grateful for being given the space and a uh, protective environment to learn and make mistakes. Yeah, and uh, we could see from the reaction of the audience what really excited them and how important it was uh, making programmes... Uh, just for children and for children only. And that was a really important thing. Um, after a while, working with CBBC and listening to the viewers, we started to work out what made kids laugh, what made them tick. And um, so we started to understand that we could, with the right people behind us and surrounding us, start to, start to take risks. I started to push things a little bit further than they had been before.
Yeah, we looked for inspiration everywhere. I mean, we watched a hell of a lot of TV at that time. Not just children's TV, we were just talking about the, the Big Breakfast. That was one of our favourite programmes. Massive hit on Channel 4 with the mighty Chris Evans presenting it. And it was actually him that gave us this inspiration because one day in an interview, he said, if an item is boring or an interview isn't going very well, then just fall off your chair. I mean, it's such a simple little narrative, right? But this, this really made us sit up and realise, you know, yeah. gave us some inspiration. I mean, just, what we just, just have a look at it again. You can actually see what's going on inside his head. Gabby's talking about something. He doesn't like the item. It's going probably nowhere. He's pretending to look at his script and he's thinking, oh, stuff this, I'm going to fall off my chair. Well, have, <laughs> have, have another little look. Have another little look. Oh, stuff this. Oh. Big laugh, and suddenly you're back on track again. So before we saw this interview with Chris telling us about this, or telling people about this, we used to just present the information that was given to us by producers. That's what we did. And then we suddenly realised that actually we could actually produce our own content as we were live on air. And that if we felt that it wasn't necessarily the right thing, or that viewers might have seen a, a game or a competition too many times before, we could do something to surprise them. So this is the first thing that we did. It's only a small thing, but it's just the start of things to come. Oh, in, in the hole. hole, in the hole, in the hole. I hate going down here. Whoa! Yep, there's, there's, there's one here. <laughs> hey, nice, nice trousers. Shut up. <laughs> I was a hippie, don't you know? <laughs> now, this was the very uh, beginning of us taking small risks. And when CBBC Channel opened in 2002, we went from just having uh, a few minutes of airtime on BBC One and BBC Two in those links, yeah, to having hours to fill on the CBBC channel. I mean, a I long, think, long time. I think the links were about nine minutes long. They were. Yeah, yeah, they were. And, but it was, it was fine for us, because actually it was like an experimental playground. So, uh, so it had, gave us a chance to develop our style and to explore what was to become our act. And this was us just uh, only about three years later. So you get your straw, and then you make an incision and just into the top okay. of the straw very carefully, like this. Okay. So you can... What we're trying to do is make a rose here. Okay, now I've been pleating it and rolling it like this, and as you can see, it's starting to take shape. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. We should never work on Blue Peter or the makeshift, should we? No, we shouldn't be That's doing That's why we're finding it so hilarious, we shouldn't. Stick, right. stick to Michael okay. and Sophie. Put that in there. <laughs> put it in, go on, put it in. Okay, God, it's not here it is. Here there is. we go, there we are. Okay. And here's one the researcher made earlier. <laughs> That's how it should look. That's there you how it go. Should look. And then once you've done that, you put them in uh, a lovely paper going made of... Right. <laughs> and, then, and then you give them to your mum. So I'm going to pretend... Dom's okay. going to pretend to be my mum and I'm going to be me. Yeah, so, so okay. two seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's got a new pink hairdo. Right, okay, so mum... Ooh, oh, oh. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, Mother. There, there's your car. Oh, oh, you forgot, Mother, you're not... Oh, Be <laughs> Bebe! I hate Bebe! How okay. dare you! Uh, and there's some nice flowers I made for you. Flowers! Her. These are just... Toilet roll! That's it! <laughs> you disgust me! You disgust me! <laughs> anyway, don't forget Mother's Day, whatever you do. <laughs> you see, that's what kids want, isn't it? Hey? You're telling me one kid in the country that would rather watch it actually being done properly or that? That's I'll what tell you want. Mentioning Beppe showed what year it was. But yeah. um, uh, the thing about that clip is, when Dom used to do the crown jewels thing, he, he, never, he, he never missed, basically. No, 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 no. Ah! Learn, learn, learn that from 40 Towers. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. Now, yeah. that act wouldn't work on something uh, formal like Blue Peter, but it worked for us. And importantly, we came to realise that the audience were on board with us. We could actually see from the audience reaction in the post that we were opening that they really liked what we were doing and we realized that it really mattered that we were making children's TV for children to own. Then we were given the massive opportunity to host a live Saturday morning kids show on the CBBC channel. Of course we, we jumped at it and in our minds this was a chance to make something unique and exactly what kids were looking for. Yeah. Should we do a Westlife moment? Oh yeah. Well, we've sat down too long. Ah. Ah. Key change. <laughs> It's boring, doesn't it? Uh, so, look, I'm gonna, we're going to let you into a little secret. I mean, actually, it's not much of a secret, actually, because anyone involved in the CBBC channel when it was launched will know this. Um, but around the time of the launch, CBBC was struggling, purely because there wasn't enough programming, physically enough programming, to go onto the channel. Um, there was a lot of S Club 7, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of that. <laughs> uh, there was uh, Blue Peter had a show where they repeated stuff, and it was called... Repeater. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, I know the man who came with that name is here to, 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 Sorry, Greg. 
<laughs> Just don't do it again, all right? But uh, they, they will wholeheartedly admit that there wasn't much buzz around the CBBC channel. And uh, Nigel Pickard, where is Nigel here today? Yeah. yeah. No, that was a woman. Have you changed? <laughs> God, you sound different. You've shaved that... the beard off and everything. There you go. Shave. Uh, Nigel, hello. Um, welcome. Thanks for coming, Nigel. Um, now, Nigel uh, was the, the big cheese at the time and was responsible with Paul for launching those two massive channels that are still massive today, CBBC and CBBC. And uh, he and the schedulers and his team wanted something live, uh, and in their words, channel defining on both Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um, so what they did, Nigel and his team went for a BBC Away day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's right. We heard. Uh, where they had a very, very good time. And, <laughs> and during this meeting, they slurred, <laughs> sorry, said that they should... <laughs> That the show should be called Dick and Dom in the Bungalow. Now, <laughs> other than the title of the show and the time slots and the presenters, obviously, it was a blank canvas. Yeah. Now, not only Nigel, but you'll have heard the phrase, success has many parents. And that was really true of the Bungalow. People like Amanda Gabitas, uh, Paul Smith, uh, Simon Hepworth, and the creative genius of Steve Ride joined forces and developed the £3,000 an episode show. <gasps> yes, you heard me correctly. £3,000 an ep. You couldn't make 30 seconds of viral content for that now. <laughs> What's by 50 people? Yeah, probably. Uh, Simon and Steve built a team around us and encouraged everyone to think the unthinkable. Yeah. So, just like the programmes that we watched and enjoyed when, when we were kids, um, uh, we knew that we wanted it to be live. It had to be live to encapsulate what we were doing as performers. And also, uh, we wanted it to include anarchy that our double act was actually becoming known for. Now, previous Saturday morning TV shows and things like The Broom Cupboard had actually changed TV forever. They really had completely changed it. But could we build on that with the bungalow? That was a big challenge. What we'd started realising through everything you've seen and heard is that surprises and risk-taking was the key to making this show a show that kids really wanted to watch. I remember one moment, actually. Close your eyes for this, actually, and just, yes, just imagine this. Next time you're in a creative meeting, imagine this. Just close your eyes and listen to this. So there's a contestant from the bungalow, a bungalow head, Small child. Dressed as a bee. Quite simple to visualise. But he could only communicate using the word buzz. He was standing with his feet, his legs, in two buckets of custard. And standing before a stuffed dummy of Paul and Barry Chuckle <laughs> at the Chuckle Shrine. Offering them half a hairy chocolate bar. Now, open your eyes. It's nice, isn't it? It's a nice feeling to think creatively like that, yeah. It was at that moment we knew which direction we were going to go in. A very weird direction. <laughs> and, and, and we can remember the moment, after a few discussions, uh, that we found out that the show was going to go from the CBC channel to BBC One. And it was... The hairs on the back of my neck are actually right now just tingling thinking about it. We went into the office. Well, it wasn't even an office, was it? No, it was like the car park. Wasn't it was it? like car park. <laughs> <laughs> and we went there, we went, what's happened? It's going, to, it's going to BBC One Saturday mornings. Everyone's jaws hit the floor, but we were so excited and gave it full gusto, as did the whole team surrounding us. And when it went to BBC One, the show gained a big following very quickly uh, of like-minded viewers, and it was talked about in school playgrounds all over the country, uh, and shouting bogeys became uh, part of popular culture. Mm. How about that? Now, because this was a show for children and children only, everything had to have a silly name, so uh, the custard we used was called Creamy Muck Muck. Actually, a fact about the custard, the, the ambrosia custard, not, not, not cheap stuff, posh stuff, we, we used half a million packets of ambrosia over the five years of the bungalow. <laughs> That's where your licence fee went. <laughs> Clock in the drains. And, uh, yeah, and the loads of kids were smeared. Their faces were smeared in Marmite. It was horrible stuff. And we used to call that Dirty Norris, but it didn't stop there. It, it was everything. Don't ask why. I, no, I, no, no, no. We'll tell you in the bar why. afterwards. Um, there was the pants dance. There was the butt dance. There was burping mooses. There was eeny, meeny, macaraka, rare eye, dominaka, chicka, popa, dicky, wopper, on pom stick. There was vomiting crocodiles. There was diddy versions of us living in comets, uh, in cupboards. It really was a kid's fantasy world on TV for them to watch. And if you've never heard of it, this is what it looked like. <laughs> Oh, 
we are, like some kind of weird sick dream, really. <laughs> oh, thank you. Do you know what? Happy days. I've never been able to eat mushy peas to this day because <laughs> of that programme. And the custard, the ambrosia, used to get solidified in your ear. You could pull it out like an earpiece. Yeah. Yeah, three weeks later, you know. Yeah, lovely. Go yeah. on, then. Anyway, just like most Saturday morning shows before it, uh, the bulk of the show wasn't rehearsed. There was just format points in the script. Actually, in the studio, just to the side of the camera, we had a, a whiteboard, a format board, just with the points. Intro, cartoon, name of the game. It was as simple as that. There, was, there wasn't a script. This gave it flexibility. Uh, but the thing that made this show stand out from the crowd that was you never knew what was going to happen next. Mm. And this was the eureka moment. We suddenly realised that unpredictability was one of the main reasons why people were tuning in to watch the show. Uh, they didn't know what was going to happen next, and they absolutely loved that. They loved the fact they were going to tune in, and they didn't know what was going to happen. And to be honest, we didn't know what was going to happen either. And I, <laughs> and I think, genuinely, I think that was part of the magic. Well, exactly. Uh, unpredictability kind of became our trademark over the years, and uh, uh, there was one time we crashed onto long-time uh, running CBBC show Blue Peter. Uh, now, when I say crashed onto it, we were actually already in the studio promoting a, another one of our programmes on the CBBC channel. Um, but we saw a nice make item going on. Simon Thomas making a uh, chocolate bunny rabbit. Was chocolate, it? chocolate Easter bunny, bunny rabbit. Yeah. Oh, we had no mics no. on. We weren't mic'd up. But we had an idea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was going very well anyway. But we suddenly had a moment where Chris Evans fell off his chair in our heads. <laughs> and we thought we'd take it in a different direction. How are you doing, guys? You all right? Mm. It's going to be really nice. You want to try a bit? That's it. You want a little try? No? OK. Add in a, a tablespoon of honey. And that's going to help it hold together, giving that extra bit of flavour. And then 150 grams of ground almonds. I needed some of that for making another batch. And just keep stirring it in. I've got 200 grams of nice biscuits. And they basically need grinding up, so stick, give it a good grind, stand back. That's a good grind, get it back on. Put down a chopping board on your kitchen table when you do it, just because it might damage the table if you do that. And then just open the bag and release the bickies and just keep stirring it in like so. Well, I'm, I'm getting steadily, steadily uh, more worried, and rightly so. <laughs> hey! Oh, man. I bet you wish your body still looked like that. Yeah, I certainly do. <laughs> Anyway, the, the, the moral of the story is, uh, we thought it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and and no one stopped us. We weren't meant to be there. No one was stopping us. Uh, the production team thought it was funny. Uh, some of the presenters thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, it didn't go down well with everyone, uh, which was actually a lesson that we, we learned from that experiment. Um, so the only way that we realised from then on that we could take risks live on, on TV without them backfiring was through the guidance of some of the uh, greatly talented and creative people who worked closely with us. So they, they would kind of monitor what we were doing. Uh, like Steve Ride, we've mentioned him before, the producer of The Bungalow, uh, Diddy TV, um, uh, The Slammer and, and Legend of Dick and Dom. Um, and not forgetting all, uh, to date, all of the channel controllers. Because they knew uh, that we loved to take risks. They know that. It became part of the act. They knew we liked to take risks. So what they would do is they would keep a watchful eye as to whether, whether we were overstepping the mark, and then they would intervene. Yeah, I mean, kids were loving what we were doing, but some adults didn't like it. Um, we, you see, we believed everything we were doing was harmless, but not everyone agreed. The bungalow hit the headlines and became only the second programme in history, the second children's programme in history, the first one being Blue Peter, to be discussed in the House of Commons. That's how far it went. An MP there took exception to a game called Make Dick Sick. Now... <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> think what you will, but let me explain it first. <laughs> Make, <laughs> Make Dick Sick was a game where a, a viewer would call in and tell me a disgusting story down the phone. Now, I had a mouthful of vegetable soup, and if the story was disgusting enough, I'd vomit all over the set. Sweet yeah, stop children's it. television. Sweet children's television, yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem with this, ish, uh, this is, though, that the uh, issue of this game went right to the top of the BBC and the game was never seen again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and on reflection, we probably shouldn't have uh, done a show that ended with an item that involved a, 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 a small clown, a bin, and... Um, and um, a cattle prod. Uh, uh, yes, a, 
a very pointy stick. Yes. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there was another moment, a petition, actually. Uh, a group of mums somewhere in the country, a group of mums got together and, and started signing a petition to get Dick and Dom in the bungalow off the air. Luckily, that was vetoed. I mean, it could have... It was. But around this time, as you can imagine, for us, we were in our late 20s, it was chaos. I mean, there was success, but yin and yang-wise, it was also kind of marred with this kind of cloud of cynicism from people trying to stop you from doing what you were doing and, and was doing really well. And it became, it actually became kind of exhausting. So we figured that after, after five years, the BBC wanted us to do another series or another couple of series, I think they wanted us to mm. do. But after five series, we thought we wanted to end on a high so we stopped it. Yeah. In the last 21 years, we've learned lots of lessons along the way, and the importance of teamwork is one of them. Every single person in the teams that we've worked with was as important in the net as the next, uh, from the channel controller to the runner. We believe those teams also have to have young voices in them. Sometimes those young people in these teams remind us of ourselves when we started out, and an example of that is a guy called Jamie Wilson. Some of you might have uh, worked with him at CBBC. Uh, he was another kids' TV Obsessive. He actually used to write to us, and we'd open his post when he was writing in. Um, but and the, then he became the bungalow runner, and he's now a really successful producer at CBBC. Like, like Richard, he reminds, he reminds us of, of how we were, when because we, we used to write to all the yeah. children's presenters when we were little, and then suddenly we've got a career here. But a too. huge part of the team. When he was on the bungalow, he'd just come up with ideas all the time. Yeah, he was great. Right. He was sparky back then, and now he's, he's so creative and very enthusiastic. Um, and he's just about to take on the role of producing CBBC's brand new Saturday morning show. So we wish him all the very best than that. Um, now, two young voices, and I know this was mentioned just before the keynote yesterday, uh, young voices on a team need to be listened to. They do. I mean, they won't always be right. I mean, they, we certainly weren't always right. Um, but if you listen to them, uh, sometimes their different perspectives moves you to a, a new place. Once you've got a team working together with no apparent hierarchy, the sky is the limit. And we've been very lucky. Every single show that we have done, every single team member of that show has immersed themselves into that project and dedicate themselves to serving the audience. Yeah. But what children's media does today, the rest of media uh, does tomorrow. I mean, look at YouTube. The YouTubers, the vloggers, it's basically what was happening in the broom cupboard back in 1985. Mm. Uh, we believe original ideas and taking risks is really important. Uh, with the bungalow, we were given an opportunity, and that situation doesn't come up very often. And turning up at a TV station in this day and age, saying you want to take massive risks on live children's television, will probably get you thrown out of the door. <laughs> so, should we do another West Life? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay. Now, Kevin McLeod moment. Kevin McLeod moment. So, we owe our success not to ourselves or each other, but to teams. We owe it to the teams that have surrounded us, protected us, and guided us. Um, the right team is absolutely critical. Yes, they can have great ideas, and they can have, uh, um, they can have creativity and belief in the programming that you're making, but the team leader has to have the trust of the broadcaster, that they are going to deliver an edgy program hmm, that takes risks, that they are going to deliver an audience for the channel, and not deliver Ofcom complaints. Mm. <laughs> We'd like to ask children's media companies to continue to take risks. Create things that children will remember for the rest of their lives. As well as serving the audience today, it'll delight them again in 10 years' time. A really great investment, we believe. And if any media organisation out there happens to find some new money for children's content down the back of their sofa, mm. <clears throat> we'd, like them, <laughs> we'd like to urge them to invest in some sort of silly. silly. Yes, there's, there is some silly about Spongebob, uh, Gumball, Hacker, yeah. uh, Diddy TV. Yeah. Uh, there is some silly out there. But we feel really that, that kids could benefit with more risk and more ridiculousness on the channels at the moment. Talking of risks. Talking of risks, we thought we'd finish up by ending our careers. <laughs> How? Hey? You got something different planned? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you about this before, but here he goes. It's, no, it's not. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take somebody out of the audience now and get them to join us. Could we get yes. the table and chairs removed, table if that's chairs. all right? We need, what we need is a man to help us, just yes, one man on his own. a man. A man. Uh, Who are we going to so have? So we Find would like to pick out... What about the... Uh, Who? Hey, a chairman. What? Hey? A chairman. Well, try him. Uh, uh, where's Greg here? <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Give him a big round of applause. Here you go. Here he comes. Hey, Greg. How are you? 
Come and stand here, right in the middle there. Stand there, that's right. Oh, no, a bit further back, actually. Over the trapdoor, good. <laughs> Turn around there. There's Greg, ladies and gentlemen. Now, he's the reason why we're all here today, which is lovely. And thanks for the invite to do this. I bet you're regretting it now, aren't you? OK, now, Greg, I've got a hunch you don't work in front of the camera. Am I right? Yes. OK, now, Greg, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a makeover so it looks like you could live in front of the camera. So as you know, people in front of the camera these days have a bit of collagen, silicone. Uh, they have a, a few fillers and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same with you. So what I'm going to do is just going to strap this on your head. All right. <laughs> Keep still. You need to take your glasses off. You're all right. Have you, you're all right? There we are. Ladies and gentlemen, look at Greg. He's looking good. What was your name again? Greg. Oh. <laughs> Kiwi! <laughs> Come on, give everyone a wave at the back. Go on, Kiwi. Kiwi! <laughs> Over to the right. Go on. Kiwi! Yeah. <laughs> Over there. Kiwi! Yeah, very nice. You got a nice voice. Yeah, I like it. Do you? Yeah, I like you as well. Oh, no. Do you? All right, Greg. <laughs> Rumours will start. Uh, do you like Dick? Next question. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Greg, now you're here. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> a ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. A ring, ring, ring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, now Greg's here. Greg, what would you like to do here on stage? Uh, I like magic. You like magic? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. All right, what's your favourite magic word? Piff, paff, puff. Oh, OK, I know that one. Piff, paff, puff. OK. Now, did you face them? They need to see you. It's a crucible. OK, now, did you know, Greg, all around you, there's magic dust? Is it fairy dust? Well, it can be. <laughs> so what I want you to do, Craig, is reach up in the air and grab some fairy dust. Go on. Mm, grab it, grab, 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 Stop. <laughs> I used to see you in these towers to try and get a job, didn't I? Now look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Greg, just sprinkle the fairy dust on my hand. Uh, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. <laughs> Now, what we're going to try and do, Greg, is roll up the magic dust in my hand, the fairy dust. I'm going to try and change it into a ball. Ooh. I know. If we can make a ball appear here, we'll give Greg a big clap. Would you like that, Greg? Yes. Yes. OK. Watch this. Nothing else in my hands there. What I'm going to do is rub the fairy dust together. Give it a blow, Greg. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Now, look, something's starting to appear between my hands. Something's there. Look, it looks like a ball. It feels like a ball. My goodness, give Greg a big round of applause! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I go to the toilet? No, you can't go to the toilet. OK, Greg. OK, Greg, look, now we're going to give you a choice. OK? We've got one ball, but do you prefer one ball or two balls? Two! Oh. <laughs> Give it a blow. <laughs> OK. Watch one ball. Two. There we go. Ooh. No, no, no. Save it for later. I'll need it. OK. Now, listen up, Greg. This one is this one and that one is that one. I'm going to do a trick where this one goes to where that one is and that one goes to where that one was. Do you understand? No. No, OK. <laughs> Let's colour code them. This is a blue ball. This is a red ball. The blue ball is dyed red. Do you understand? No. OK, good. <laughs> We're going to share these out. One in my mouth, one in my hand. Do you want the wet one or the dry one? The wet one, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK. I'll have the dry one, you have the wet one. Hold out your hand flat like a table. Close your hand around that ball, squeeze nice and tight. Hold it in the air nice and tight. Right, OK. I'm going to take my ball over here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to squeeze it between my finger and thumb. I'm going to roll it till it becomes an invisible ball. When it disappears, you all clap. There you go. Go on. <laughs> Sarcastic, but I'll take it. Anyway, it's flying through the air and BAM! Greg, did you feel it? I felt it all right. <laughs> yeah. In a moment, Greg, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to open up your hands. If there are two balls resting on your palm, shut it, love. There, this whole place is going to go wild with applause. Throw their watches, wallets, children and teacups into the air. Behind the other way, please. I go slowly, 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 slowly. Look at that. Can I go to the toilet now? No, you can't go to the toilet. Greg, I'm going to give you a choice. You can either go back to your seat, you can stay up here. What do you want to do? Stay up here. OK. Oh, do you? It's my favourite place in the world. OK. Uh, Greg, what do you want to do? I like dancing. All oh, right. <laughs> OK. So, uh, OK. Well, what do you want to dance to? YMCA. OK. <laughs> Let's all do it together to know, so he doesn't look so silly. All right, hit the music. Let's go. Ready? Hit the music. <laughs> OK, ready. Hop. YMCA. And again. Ready. Ready? Y -M -C -A. 
One last time. Y and C A. Okay. La 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 la. Okay. I'm a little teapot. Shut up. Stop it, Greg. Greg, stop it. No, not that. Naughty Greg. That's silly. Naughty Greg. That's silly. No. Now, Greg, before we go, everyone get your camera phones ready because we're going to have a little, um, a little pose, a photo opportunity, photo shoot. What do you want to invest in? Silly. Silly. Rich, come out from under there. OK, Greg, hold that. Come out. Photos. Here we go. Three, two, one. Invest in silly. <laughs> Greg, thanks so much. Look, I'll tell you what, there's been one star. It has been... Oh, God. Oh, stuck God. forever. It's been Greg. Thanks for being a great sport, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Great chance, everyone. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey. Well, that's all from us. Thanks so much for having us. As we said, it's been a great honour and a privilege to be here. Now, they yeah. say that you play Sheffield twice in your career. Once on the way up and once on the way down. It's good to be back. <laughs> See you later, boys. We've been Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I did warn you it was going to be intellectually challenging and a high-level analysis, and I think they certainly delivered. Please welcome back Dick and Dom. Um, we've, we've got about ten minutes, and Dick and Dom have very kindly said they're prepared to answer questions. It, not, uh, not about where the future careful. of media is going. We don't care about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely sure what questions you're going to ask, but I can't wait to hear. Has anybody got a really intellectually challenging question for uh, Dick and Dom? A or uh, or yeah. maybe a pure one, yes, would be just as good. <laughs> what are your favourite complaints from your time at, in, the Brumco, <laughs> in the bungalow? Uh, that's oh, a really good you question. Met, oh, we... Well, we got quite a few complaints when we did the first kind of outrageous thing on the bungalow, uh, on, on the channel days where we got a, a gutted salmon, and, and it was a girl that had won a forfeit called the Codfather. So she was wearing baggy clothes. We'd shoved loads of fish in her clothes and then got a massive salmon and stuck it on her head as a hat so that the guts were hanging around her head like that. And then, and then we moved the mouth of the salmon so it was talking to her. Um, there was obviously the one which you can Google later. We're not actually going to discuss it too much, but with the T-shirt thing. But it was all very innocent at oh, the time. That um, but Does complaints anyone, generally, anyone I suppose the complaints... The T-shirt thing? Uh, Does anyone know? Anyway, Some people no. remember it. Someone shuffling... Uh, I suppose with complaints, though, with our act, I suppose we're a bit like Marmite. We, we believe that, that you either love us or you hate us. So there are a lot of haters out there as well. well not but, haters. You know, we ex not haters. Confused yeah, people. Confused, yeah. <laughs> they're, not sh they're not quite too sure Bring what to around. think of it. Yeah, but, thank but that's you. Yeah, no, I think the T-shirt was quite a, a chunky complaint. Yes. Here's a question. I, I imagine we could probably go on all night with yeah. your list of uh, favourite complaints. <laughs> I think uh, so. Yeah. Um, perhaps we should go on to another question. Any more questions? One at the back there, please. Right yeah, at the back. Yeah. Sorry to make you yeah, run. shout it. It'd be quicker. <laughs> no, there's a... uh, so we keep hearing about how kids are changing so much these days. Uh, in terms of silliness, is there any difference between the silly that the kids liked at the start of your career as opposed to the silly they like now? No, I, uh, we firmly believe that actually what kids are finding funny is very, very similar to when we started out yeah. and uh, even before that. If you look at any Laurel and Hardy stuff, it's ridiculous. Any of the Marx Brothers stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you check out some of their stuff, that is slapstick of the highest, highest order. So we believe that with kids, the thing that has changed is their viewing habits, how they view what they, they, they watch, how they find what they watch, what they laugh at, I don't think it's changed. No, I think it's still as simple, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, not, not to do with TV, but toys. You know, those fidget spinners, simple. You know, that could have been something we had in the 80s. Well, you, I was. It was called a yo-yo. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Very interesting question. Very, but I don't, I don't think their humour has changed. You no, know, kids are set in stone. stone. Brilliant. But very good question. Thank you very much. And another question? Hello. One in the middle here. Hello. Mike. Any mic? Microphone oh. to him here. Is that uh, a mic? <laughs> That's spooky. All the chances. <laughs> That's Mike the mic. Yes, I am Mike. How did you know? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> As a, I was 13 years old and I sent my first I, song that I've written to the, B, the BBC. And for, what some, pro, for what programme did you sing it? It wasn't for anything in particular, but oh. uh, somebody called Vernon Lawrence, who some people here might remember, actually was a, a really big producer, and he was obviously just a florist, isn't it, at the time, and sent me a very nice letter back and encouraged me. Are, are there avenues, you know, what are the best avenues to encourage kids to actually produce content? 
now and to get some response because that meant so much to me back then. Yeah. yeah, well, we used to have a game on the bungalow, didn't we, where kids would write in and, and make up one of the games each week. I think there was a game called Bogey Cars, which was just basically mm. some cardboard boxes turned into that looked like cars and we had to fling slime at them. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, yeah. something really simple, but we, we, yeah, we really, we really we believe in that. We think that should be a big part of children's TV. Because I, there probably should be, we should keep this program idea under our hands, actually. No, no, shut up. Yeah, no, not that. That. I'll tell shut you up. about that later. It's quite oh, a Thank you, Mike. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to the Commissioner of the Big Breakfast about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, but um, I think if you give children a platform to showcase what they are really passionate about, so they get some some kind of sense of of reward for their efforts, that's going to make them work harder. And I think nowadays it's a lot easier. Um, for children to get that kind of notoriety for their idea with platforms like YouTube, uh, they can drive their own content and get instant success, and they will be they will reap the uh, rewards of their own hard work. Uh, so the more effort they put, in, rather than like us, we we had to wait for someone to uh, uh, appreciate what we did and the hard work we we're putting in. Whereas this, they're in total control. So I think it's it's, it's a lot easier. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Another question? Ah. Um, I think this is going to be a tricky one. There? I've just got a feeling. Yes, yeah, very determined. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, she's just. <laughs> Are you from that group that tried to get us banned? No, it's, <laughs> it's a tricky one. Just aside from silliness, what would you say for Live and Dangerous going forward? What, have you got any tips in how it can succeed in sort of 2017, 18? Can explain what that is. Yeah, uh, Live and Dangerous is going to be the new um, CBBC Saturday morning program. It's a working title, right? Work, is it is a, still a working title, is it? I don't know. It is, it is a working title. No, 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 it could be, end up being the title, who knows? I think I mean, it just it depends. the whole thing. I suppose it all depends in which direction, we don't, we don't know which direction they want oh, to hello, go in. Ian. Hello, oh, Ian. hi, yes. No, Ian. Oh, all right. Ian, Ian can tell us. Ian France, everybody, he's a head of uh, press. <laughs> That's the best way to make a programme. We haven't okay. got a clue. Ha however, your question would be, uh, what tips would you give to try and yeah. nail it down yeah, and yeah, make yeah. it a success? Well, I think, I think if, you, if you're going to call it something like Life and Dangerous or, or promote the fact that it was going to be edgy, you've got to stick to that and be totally yeah. true to that and uh, take risks. As we've just been saying, and not be afraid to take risks as no. well. You know, I think, yeah, exactly. Not be afraid to take risks is the big point there. Because uh, I know a lot of us these, in this day and age, we do try to stick by the rule book because that's just. I the way, mean, everywhere. The way all, things all, are. All yeah, media, that's the way things are. Yeah. You know, radio. But, or... You know, we, we believe, as we were saying before, that it'd be nice to see someone just pushing it just a little bit, just to see what and, happened. And it's great. It might not work, as we made mistakes in the past. It might not work, but it could work and it could open a whole new. Ian and the team uh, who are working on it are, you know, at the moment, very much towards making it an R kick, and I think I think yeah. that's a brilliant thing to do, and I think it really needs to happen. Yeah. Uh, and if you're going to do it, you got to. And it. there's some fantastic talent at CBC, so you know, with Jamie that we were talking about earlier, and I'm sure they'll crack it, and it'll be great. Yeah. Be brave, brave, bold, and silly, huh? Be yeah, brave, <laughs> yes, bold, and silly. Brave, bold, and silly. Nice. Yeah. Bold and silly. Yeah. We've got time for a couple more questions, maybe. Uh, was there someone else just here somewhere? Was there, was there another one? Um, for like, young people who want to go into TV or you know, work in the TV industry, what kind of advice would you give to like, the runners here, even at the CMC, who are kind of trying to work their way up into the industry? Well, as we said, we started as well. I started as a runner, opening the post, like I said, you know, making the tea. I was making the tea for I think Andy Peters was the producer of the Ozone once, and it was a children's music program, and I used to make the tea for him. You know, I think running or do, doing the job you're doing now, stick doing it for as long as you can. Learn the trade, learn the business. You know, be behind the scenes, find out what happens, meet the people, and then take the next step up. And you know, that can come through just you know, in Manchester. There's massive opportunities now. So write letter, write letters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grandpa. <laughs> How was your pet dinosaur? Love it. <laughs> Good God. Why I'll tell you what, I'd probably make an impression, wouldn't it? It's good, isn't it? What the hell is this? <laughs> it's a letter, sire. You open it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, so send a homing pigeon to Manchester and, uh, and ask them the question. If there's any... Forget it. <laughs> What's your name? If anyone here gets a letter from Rachel, you know to give her a job, all right. But we've known runners. We work with a runner on Absolute Genius called Dom. Mm. Uh, oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. and he was, he was just hard working. Yeah. He worked really hard. He didn't sigh, he didn't moan. It is hard work. It's small pay, long hours, and you work outside of the hours that you're supposed to work as well, because you have to. You have to put hard work into it. For little money. But, but the thing about it is, 
people notice. Everyone else in the team will notice how hard you are working. Because we, we noticed how hard that runner was working. We actually went and told the boss, didn't we, yeah. how hard working he was. And then he got promoted. And I think he's been promoted. I think he's left CBB. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think he's now working as uh, an, an AP. somewhere. Uh, and that was within a year and a half. Oh, easy, yeah. So he just worked really, really hard. And he was very, very focused. When he had just junked his um, uh, geography degree to yeah, come and like become that, a runner yeah. as well. His parents were delighted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. I think we've got time for one more question. One more question. Anyone got a particularly silly over here. question over here? Lady over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, the lady looking around for another lady looking over there. <laughs> hey, um, getting back to the topic of humour, do you think there's a specific childish humour or do you think that also works for grown-ups? Do you have any thoughts on the differences of grown-up humour, child humour? Do you feel it's the no. same thing? No, because I think it's... We were all laughing a lot. I think <laughs> oh, if, thank if, you. Thank you. I think if something's funny, it's funny. Uh, we're on tour at the moment, doing many theatres across the country, and it's very interesting to look at the demographic that come and watches. And it's not just children, it's families, it's grandmas, grandparents, it's students, and they all laugh along with us, because what we, what we do isn't so much children's humour, it's just, just funny. Just, just humour. Well, we believe that it's funny. We, we hope so. you do too. And I say so myself. <laughs> Actually, we laugh at ourselves yeah. more than anyone else laughs at us. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you know, you look at other things that are famous from, from kids' TV that made people laugh. Tis Was yeah. is a show uh, much like some of the stuff you've watched uh, years ago, and the whole family watched it, and they laughed their socks off. And interestingly, a lot of the stuff that's on Saturday night, prime time, is funny and could almost be a kid's programme. You look at things like Big Heads, you look oh, at take uh, away. Ninja Something Warrior, like Takeaway. Take yeah. Any of these programmes, if you actually scaled them down and gave them a, bit less bu a lot less budget, <laughs> 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 then uh, mm. actually they wouldn't not fit outside CBBC or any other, uh, other quality uh, broadcasters as well. Sorry, I just came <laughs> uh, But yeah, so they would fit into a children's schedule, no problem. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, I think um, I have just one more job to do, if I can ask the help of my glamorous assistant, Keith. Oh, God. Thank you this oh, is oh, to uh, <laughs> thank you both very thank much very for much. Um, giving oh, us a wonderful... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> look! Look! <laughs> look! We're going to get... While you're in Sheffield, try this stuff. <laughs> Head down! Oh, Head down! Me and, me and a friend of mine in Sheffield, we, we used to shoot this in shot glasses. We love it that much. <laughs> Try one later at the bar. Shot yeah, of Hendo's, we'll please. We'll see you there for a shot of Henderson's Relish. Uh, Thanks very much for everyone. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, thank you much. Appreciate Cheers. it. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Oh, bye -bye. And thank you, Paul, as well. Yeah, Paul Smith, producer, and Steve Wynn, exec producer of tonight. And, and Greg, thank, thank you very Greg. much. Cheers, Cheers, folks. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Sue.